We're back with our LotMax SC10 Shark, and today we're going to install the two color feature. Hello everyone, Chris here, and I have been doing a lot of testing on my LotMax SC10 Shark, but only in single color mode so far. There are a couple of add-on features that LotMax offers when you buy your Shark, like auto bed leveling, which we did a video on previously, buy color, and laser engraving. And I want to test all those out. Today we're going to install the two color option. It is a V-split hot end in a one nozzle, and it should be pretty straightforward to get installed, and their software does support it directly out of the box. So that's what we're going to do today. Hopefully this will be a quick one. We are going to see what's in the kit, get it installed, and do some two color prints. So let's get into it. So here's the bicolor printing kit. You get an extra coupler and nozzle. You get a couple of Bowden tubes, the wiring needed, an additional spool holder. Here's a look at the hot end. It is one nozzle, two feeds, so it's a V coupler inside there. And then your extra extruder on the bracket with its own filament runout sensor. It's just like the stock extruder, it's got dual drive gears. We'll start by taking off the plastic cover for the fan shroud. There are two screws behind here, down low, that remove it. There's a shot of those right there. And be careful of your fan wiring while you're doing that. You might have to undo a couple of the zip ties. We can just swing that out of the way for now. I'm gonna take off the silicone sock. Then we need to remove our heater cartridge and our thermistor. Now, depending on how much you've used your printer or how much gunk is built up on it, you might have to heat this up to get these to come out. But for the heater, you just have one grub screw right up here in front. We'll back that out. And then we should be able to slide out the heater. And then for the thermistor, you actually have a Phillips head screw over here on the right. It's right here. We'll just back that out. Be careful. Sometimes these are pretty easy to strip. And you don't want to hurt your thermistor wires. And the thermistor and heater are out. We are going to be reusing those on our new hot end setup. Next, we're gonna remove the Bowden tube from the top of the hot end. You should be able to just push down on this coupler and pull the tube out. If you're having problems getting the tube out, you can heat up, I know we just took out the heater, but you can heat up and that might help free it up because this does go all the way down to the nozzle. If you have to result to that, you can put your heater and thermistor back in and give that a try. Also, you can back out this coupler if you can't get it out of the coupler. Use that as a last resort because the teeth in the coupler can cut the tube, but we're going to be replacing those anyway for this new hot end setup. Just know you have some options if you can't get the tube out. Now we're going to take out these two screws and remove the hot end. And now the single color hot end is off. And the dual color hot end will go right in its place. The heater goes towards the front if you need to know which way to put it on. It goes on with those same two screws and the same two holes. There is a split washer on those screws, just make sure that does follow your screw when you take it out. Now the single color hot end had a silicone sock, and the heat block on that one is quite a bit thicker, so this sock won't fit on the two color. I'm not sure if they make one for this hot end or not yet, but this one just has some fiber tape, it's fiberglass with captain tape on it. It works the same way, but sometimes this can be a pain, especially if you have a blob, it can tear. So hopefully LotMax can get us some silicone socks for these as well. Now we're just going to reverse the same procedure. I'm going to pull out my Phillips head screw and put my thermistor in. Let's zoom in real quick just in case you have questions on how that thermistor goes in there. You can see the bulb goes in the hole down below and then those wires, that screw just kind of straddles both of them. You don't need to get this very tight, just enough to keep it in place. You don't want to pinch those wires. Then we'll slide our heater in and on this one the set screw is up here in the front. Just make sure the heater is coming through here you want it flush on the front. And then we'll tighten up our set screw. And now we can put our fan shroud back on. It goes back in the same two screws. Just make sure that you don't pinch any of the wires. It does kind of ride low. They should be able to comfortably fit behind these two couplers. Now our second extruder housing is gonna kind of hang off the back here, roughly in the middle of your top extrusion. So you can feed one filament coming this way and one filament going that way to the stock extruder location. There are spool holders for this machine that come with it that go on the top, I just don't use them. But you can do that. So 
So then the extruder on top, we're going to put our Bowden tube in. And let's put that one on the right coupler on the hot end. And we'll go ahead and replace the tube that we had on here before. And this is the shorter of the two in this kit. And we're going to use that one for the left coupler. Then we're going to install our second set of wires. The wires that go on the motor side don't have a clip tab on them. Filament sensor there, motor wires here around the back. And I'm not sure the best way to run these, but I'm going to run them off to the left with all of my other wires. And then these, the other side of that, will plug into the front of the machine right here. Your four pin on the right and your three pin on the left. Now you will need an extra stepper driver to control that stepper motor. So we want to make sure that that is installed. So this cover has six Phillips screws. We're just going to remove it and have a look. And there's a look at your board, all of your drivers. There's your second extruder driver right there. It is in place and it should be, but it never hurts to check. If something's not working, this is probably why. So we're good there. We can put our cover back on. So as far as the hardware goes, we are all set but we do need to make a quick configuration update first. So let's go to the computer. So we will need to make some configuration changes to enable that dual color and your firmware should have came on your SD card, but we're going to have to use the SD card to flash it. This is what all the software on the SD card looks like when you get it. We'll just go into firmware. We're going to go into SC 10 shark firmware and we'll open up configuration. I suggest you use something like notepad plus plus to edit this. And this last line down here, extruder number, we're just going to take it from one to two. This is the stock firmware. If you've made any changes, you can use your version. Just make sure they're updated here. We are good. We can save this file. And from that firmware, we actually need a couple of files to make sure the flash is complete with our new configuration update. We need everything but the instructions for firmware upgrade. So we need the whole DIY icon folder system, our configuration file, and our SM3DP bin. And we'll just copy and we'll paste those on our SD card. And then we can load our SD card on our printer and boot up. SD card is in. Let's power on. You get a notice on the screen that it is updating. We'll let that run for a moment. When the update's complete, you should see your shark logo and we'll go back to everything normal. So now we need to make a two color file so we can print it. So up here, lot max shark, we're going to hit manage printers. We'll hit machine settings. We're going to bump up the number of extruders to two. You can see the icons up here updated. We now have two extruders. That should be the only change you have to make. We'll close this. And we're just going to pull in a couple of the test cubes I like to use. Cura does this a little bit different, but no problem. We're just going to grab block one and two. We can bring them in both at the same time. Notice they're not grouped correctly. We're going to fix that. Let's click on our first one. We'll right click. We're going to let that be extruder one. Our second one, right click. We're going to set that to extruder two. Then we're going to right click and select all models. One more right click, merge models. Now that puts them in the orientation they should have been in when we pulled them in at the beginning. You can make adjustments to your materials, stuff like that over here. I'm just running PLA, so everything stock should be fine. Let's just hit slice and then I'm going to hit preview and you can see over here in the corner, we have our little wipe tower. Now I want to save this to my SD card, the same one I just used to flash the firmware, but I want to remove all the firmware just to be safe. So it doesn't try to update every time we boot. So you can just delete all these or you can just format the SD card, whatever you're comfortable with. Now back to the slicer, I'm just going to hit save to removable drive. And then I'll hit eject. So our file's ready to go, our hardware's all set up, but we did change out a hot end. And anytime you change a hot end, you need to check for level. And it's probably a good idea to hot tighten the nozzle. So I'm gonna preheat. I'm actually gonna set the nozzle just a bit higher. We'll set it to about 240. And these are six millimeter nozzles. I'm just gonna hold the heat block with a pair of pliers. Be careful of your heater. And then I'm gonna tighten it up with my wrench. Now the bed's heated, I'm going to go ahead and check my level manually with my screws. 
before I do any of the auto leveling. I may need to adjust my offset as well, but I want to make sure that nozzle isn't going to collide. So I'm just going to go home and I'll use a piece of paper to protect my sheet if I need to. No collision, we look okay. I'm going to disable the steppers and just manually run around the bed and make sure everything is correct. It might be just a little higher than the original nozzle. And I think I forgot to say it, but I set the bed up to 60, by the way. The nozzle paper check just fine. The level's pretty good. We might need to adjust our offset a bit, maybe bring it down a bit, but we can do that after we start our first print. Let's get some filament loaded up. We're gonna use some printed solid Jesse green slime over here on the left, and some printed solid Jesse blood red glitter over here on the right. And you wanna bring both the filaments down to about 10 millimeters above the coupler so it has room to fade them both in and out. You might consider swapping this out with some of the clear Bowden tube, it might be easier to see. And maybe put a piece of tape about 10 millimeters up on this so you have a reference for when you're loading this. And I know that's hard to see, but it should be good right about here. And it should take care of the rest. We'll go back to the home screen. It does now say double extruder. And we're just gonna hit print. Test blocks print. So we just finished our auto level. Now it's going to bring in filament one. The one on the left, that's extruder one. And then we're going to start our prime line. We've built our wipe tower. Now we've done our skirt around our model. First layer of our cube is complete. Now we're going to swap out filament. We're on filament number two. Now we're starting on our second cube. And back to our first color. So everything seems to be working correctly. Let's let this print. Not too bad, the green is a little red, red's a little green, they're not as vibrant as they should be, so there's a little bleed there. But hopefully there's something we can set in Cura, or the Lotmax version of Cura, to mitigate this. But the color change went really well, all the swaps were clean. It is important to remember, after every print, you need to pull your filament back to that 10 millimeter zone, so that you can start your next print. I always like to do this right after the print finishes, because I will forget if I don't. So we'll jump back into Cura real quick. So there are some settings you can do to help with the bleed from part to part. But the first thing I wanna do is make our filament colors different so that it's easier to see what's going on here. Right now, they're both this green color. So I'm gonna to go to Settings, Printer, Manage Printer, go to Materials, and we have this generic PLA. I have a couple of PLAs, but I'm just gonna show you how to do it. I'm just gonna hit Duplicate. And then I still have a generic PLA, I'm just gonna change the color. And we'll change it to red. Now I have two PLAs that I can use so that I can make them both PLA, same settings, but different colors, just so it's easier to see. So I'm gonna close, and you can switch which filament goes to which extruder up here. Go to our green one, and the second one, that one goes to our red one. So there, now we can see what's going on. Now before we make any changes, let's just go ahead and hit slice so I can show you what the prime tower looks like now. We'll just go to preview. And you can see we have some red and some green. Now if we're having color bleed problems, what you wanna do is alter prime tower minimum volume. You have to do it on both extruders. Let's just set it to 50 and we'll go to the red one and set it to 50. And let's re-slice. And now you can see we have a lot more green and a lot more red, so it's priming more. Sometimes if you have to increase that minimum volume so much, you might have to increase the size of your prime tower. So if you take it to 25, and let's just re-slice, you can see how that altered the colors. So just keep that in mind if you need to add prime tower minimum volume. So now I'm going to reprint these two test blocks with these settings to make sure that fixed our color bleed issue. And it has helped to make those colors a lot sharper. The first one is on the bottom, new one's on the top. It's easier to see from the side. You can see how much red was in that first one over here. And now with our new prime tower settings, I think it's time to print a two color Benchy. Let's give it a go.
and we are done. And that's a pretty good looking two color Benchy. The two color Benchy isn't the easiest thing in the world to pull off, especially because of these right here. It has to do those layer by layer, as you know, and they're really small. So for this to come out this clean is a pretty good exercise for this printer, and it turned out really well. I'm pretty impressed with it. So there it is, the Lapmax SC10 Shark dual color install is now complete. And I have to say it went really well. The install is easy and the slicer's already set up for dual color. You don't have to mess with a lot of tweaking to get started printing. And with these setups where you have two filaments going into one nozzle, sometimes those have a tendency to jam, but I haven't had any issues on this one so far. And the print quality, just for getting it installed and running a couple prints, it looks pretty good. We might want to tweak retraction and we will have to adjust those volume settings based on the filament, but I really like what I'm seeing. So if you're going to get yourself a shark, you might want to consider adding the dual color kit. That's it for today, and I will see you very soon on the next one.